much problem that I got from Animal Freshman. I said, I don't like having it. And so I wanted to do this project about educational video games because a lot of people try to make educational video games that teenagers would use, but they're not very successful. For <laughs> <laughs> example, this game right here, I um, searched educational video games and I started playing this game. At first I thought it was cool because you have the little characters down here. And then the green, these are white blood cells. And the green dots are uh, disease that are entering the body through the splinter, which is right here. So your objective in this game is to basically click the white blood cells to capture all the green dots. So at first I thought it was really cool. Then I started playing it. And um, it got very annoying and very boring, boring <laughs> very quickly. And because it, the game was very... It was basically endless, and this was the only level I got to because it took so long. So basically, I quit. So this led me to think about ways that we could improve. So I would model a game after Call of Duty or Halo because um, it gives features because they're very exciting, and hundreds of thousands of kids play these games. Halo 3, for example, has been out for over two years, and I was online, and in the online lobby, it tells you how many people are online. And so a couple of days ago, two, over 200,000 people were playing at the same time. And there are many more that have the game and weren't on. So uh, 200,000 people who were using the online feature, which is probably why they bought the game, is very interesting, especially since it's over two years old. And Call of Duty, over um, 500,000 kids have this game. It's just amazing. So um, I was thinking of modeling an educational video game that would have this feature, online interaction interactions and this would be very useful because kids could learn about things with, by, while interacting and working with other people so they basically build, they build social skills and they gain knowledge through video games. Um, hi I'm Alex I'm also a freshman at Staten Island Academy and my game is an interactive iPhone app called Body Pop. called Body Pop, and what really got me into iPhone applications for education was when I was searching for something that could help with learning anatomy, I downloaded about five free applications and I thought they were all really, really boring. <laughs> I would completely lose interest and I tried to come up with something that would get me interested in learning and creating my own application seemed like a good way and the idea I have is you your avatar and potentially your friend's avatar are stuck inside a pod and you're making your way through the human body and different levels are different things you're learning like the digestive system or bloodstream and you make your way through the body and I just thought it was a really get, great way to get people interested because I'm a very visual learner so on a test if I'm remembering what I learned about the digestive system it's much easier to remember my avatar going through the small intestine than remembering a page in the textbook. So I just thought it was a really great way to get people excited because you're taking a journey and science is supposed to be exciting. And I thought it was a great way to get people excited. Okay, thank you. Did you create that or is that online? We just oh, the first word. It's just an idea. It's oh. not it's not out. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to talk to you about it. I, I think the avatar thing is fantastic. I was at a session at the North Carolina College of Textiles, and this guy was telling the leaders of the textile industry that the avatar will be what you will be looking at in the future to design your clothes. And if you can put that together in science at your age doing this, you're way ahead. Kids will be interested in everybody. Um, so I'm not sure if if I would necessarily. I like the idea that you want to do like Halo and Call of Duty. <laughs> I like that we all giggle because we're like, oh my god, it's like military war. But I think what you're getting at is maybe some of the rewards. Like I'm interested in what was it about the game that made you want to keep playing? Was it the fact that like once you went through a level, you could pick something up and it gave you a power? Or was there like some new defense or some new like skill that you had to acquire in order to get to the next level? Like, what pushed you to keep playing, to keep playing Halo? Like, My 
my friends, they, some of my friends and my cousins are very good at video games. Fortunately, I'm not that good. And so I lose a lot and I get very frustrate, frustrated. So I try to go to their level. So I, do that, I get addicted and keep on playing so I can some, someday reach their level. So there's like, it's like, there's like an the element of wanting to challenge yeah. and like competition mm -hmm. against people. That are That's why the online feature is so good. Yeah, yeah all being able to connect with other people and even like your yeah, you know, your house playing it or whatever, something like that, something that you can connect with other people. I mean, have, you, have you guys found a, a compelling online game that actually has an education component? Yeah. Wanting yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big deal. It's, yeah. it's not yes. a trivial amount of engineering. I know what, what really draws me to games and what gets me interested is <clears throat> there are some games that have really poor graphics that just really aren't that great of an idea, but when you go on a site and you see that this is the most played game that week, or you hear all your friends talking about a game that they're playing, that's what really gets you interested. So all these people come together and all of a sudden it's the most popular game that everyone's playing. And that's why I joined Facebook, that's why a lot of people join Twitter, because everyone you know is doing it and it's good connections. Yeah. What about Spore? Spore. Spore. I don't think you can play Spore. Yes, I, I do. So you do play Spore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> certain amino acids are hydrophobic, I think it is, or hydrophobic. I'm not exactly sure on it. If I were to play more, it constantly reminds you, though, what these certain things are. So it's very good to actually teach you what's going on. And yet it's a fun game that slowly introduces features of what makes protein balanced. You see, I, th I think he, he makes a good point, is that so many of the games are either highly addictive and fun, or they're educational and boring. And it's trying to find the mix of the two. But I quizzed him after uh, he played the game for about a half hour, what did he do on protein folding? And he did have a basic understanding of protein folding, but it was still pretty basic. It, it wasn't teaching him a whole lot um, about protein folding. Yeah, it's interesting. I ended up um, developing a, a gaming platform for scientists last year for, I think, Tank Building Institute for the Future. And it's um, at lab.signtific.org. So the, science, the lab at Scientific was basically uh, a YouTube video that we would, we would go to a conference, we would challenge people to watch this video. If in the year 2019 you could launch your own personal satellite, what would that look like and what would you do with that satellite? And we had over 15,000 people give 140 character forecasts about the future. But the, the problem with this is, is that you don't run them anymore. They only lasted for a couple of days, and they were only for like really high-end science conferences. So it's like if I could take that idea that we were developing then and give it to guys like to, to students, I think that is similar to what you're looking for. It was really fun, and because it's only 140 characters like Twitter, you kept coming up with ideas and you keep posting them, and then play off of other people's ideas. And there was an incentive, and there was, you discovered new information. And so you know this is this is an amazing. I have tons of friends who are trying to make games like this, and this is really valuable feedback. Thank you. We're Thank actually you. going to continue with the gaming, <coughs> Jack's presentation. Well, yeah, I'm 